Hello, this is a tutorial video for your covalent compounds assignment. Again, this assignment is to be done in your notebook. The questions are on the lesson calendar, so you don't actually have this handout. You'll just copy it into your notebook. I'm going to go through one problem from each of the three sections to show you an example of the three topics we went over in class, resonance structures, formal charge, and bond energies. Keep in mind that all three of these types of problems, you are expected to have a Lewis structure. Um, this one is actually, that's your answer, but even in the bond energies, you'll need to draw a Lewis structure to give you the answer. So I'm going to go through and do one example from each. Hopefully you'll be able to finish the assignment after that. Um, so the first one, resonance structures. Again, we're using Lewis structures, so I will be referring to the steps for drawing Lewis structures, which you have in your notes. You'll also need your periodic table, of course, for valence electrons. But for this first one, I'm going to do 1A, which is SeO2. So I'm going to follow my steps for writing Lewis structures, which the first step is to total the number of valence electrons from all the atoms. So I have selenium first in the formula. Uh, which is right here, and according to our periodic table, it gives six valence electrons. So we'll have six. And then oxygens also give us six valence electrons, but we have two of them. So that's going to give us a total of 18 electrons. So keep that in mind when we're drawing our Lewis structure. Second step, this is a good review of just Lewis structures, use dashes to connect all atoms to a central atom. In this one, it's pretty easy to see what our central atom is because it's all by itself. It's selenium, so we're going to put that in the middle. So I'll do that there. And then the oxygens will go on the outside. And similar to the last video, I'm going to switch to pencil because I am not sure how the rest of this will play out. So we'll see, um, following our steps, I need to add dots to the outer atoms to complete their octet. So I'll do that for these oxygens. And then I need to complete the central atoms octet. When I do that, I think I'm done. But remember, we need to ask these questions. Do we use the exact number of valence electrons? And did we surround everyone with eight? We surrounded everyone with eight, but let's see if we use the correct amount. Remember, you need to count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We have one pair too many. So remember that when that happens, it means that we need to use a double or triple bond. And this is a good sign because resonance structures, when we have these types of questions, essentially what that means is for all of these resonance structure problems, you're going to have a double bond that could go on more than one atom. That's the whole question is, you have to draw all of the possibilities for where to put the double bond. So if I'm looking at this structure, I need to make a double bond and I can choose to put the double bond here or here. And in this example, and as it should be for these resonance structure ex uh, questions, is these are identical. And so it, previously we said it didn't matter where you put the double bond. But this question is asking for all the resonance structures, so you have to draw all the possibilities. So I will first put it on the left side. So to do that, I'll erase a pair from the central atom and a pair from the oxygen on the left, and then I'll put the double bond on that side. All right, so let me go over that in pen so you can see it better. And then we'll make sure we can answer these two questions for our Lewis structure. Did we use the exact number of electrons? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We used the correct amount. And everyone's surrounded still by 8. 2, 4, 6, 8 for the oxygen. 2, 4, 6, 8 for the selenium. 2, 4, 6, 8 for this oxygen. So this is one correct Lewis structure. The question is asking for all the resonance structures. So think back to when you made the double bond. Where was the other place or the other places that you could have put the double bond? In this case, there's one other spot we could have put the double bond on this oxygen. So in order to do that, to show that in our answer, we're going to draw another Lewis structure. And in this one, 
we'll put the double bond on the other oxygen and fill in our electrons accordingly. So all we're doing is putting the double bond in all of the places that it could exist. So it's going to be on identical um, branches essentially is when you get to that time where you make the double bond you choose and you think to yourself well I could put it there or there. That's a hint that there are resonance structures. And then the last thing you'll need to do is keep in mind you have to have a double headed arrow between your resonance structures. So this answer we only have two resonance structures so I put the double headed arrow between them. If I had another resonance structure I would need another double headed arrow and then the last resonance structure here. So you can have more than two resonance structures. So that's the answer for A. In this example, there's only two resonance structures, one with the double bond here, the other one with the double bond there. And that's it for number 1A. Number 2 is about formal charge. So formal charge are kind of big problems, but there's a pretty easy way to do it um, using circles is the method that I've been teaching in class. So the way these questions are asked is that they will give you two Lewis structures for a particular compound. So this is for NO2+. We have this structure and we have this structure. It's in brackets because it has a charge. So keep that in mind when you're drawing your Lewis structures. But what the question is asking is to use formal charge to figure out which structure is better. One of these structures is more favorable for the compound. And we need to figure out what that is using formal charge. So to do that, if you look back in your notes, there's a formula, but I'll just go through that formula with the question here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first work on this structure. I'm going to draw circles around each atom, and I'll use some different colors to show that. So I'll do that oxygen there in purple. Hopefully you can see the difference in these colors. nitrogen, and then I'm going to use blue for this oxygen here. Alright, so once you have those sectioned off, imagine that there's a dot at the end of each of these bonds. And what you're going to do are some simple calculations here, and you need to do these calculations for each different type of atom. And notice that these oxygens, even though they're both oxygen, they're in a different environment, so we'll have to do two separate calculations for them. So we're going to go through and first calculate formal charge for this oxygen. So we'll do formal charge, and the way I'll tell myself that it's that oxygen is it's the one that has the single bond. So I'll just draw that there. The way we do this very easy calculation is you're going to take the valence electrons for that atom. So remember oxygen has six valence electrons. So you're going to put six. And then you're going to subtract the number of dots in its circle for that oxygen. So I count the dots in its circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you calculate that. So six minus seven is negative one. So that's that oxygen, its formal charge. Next, we'll move on to the nitrogen here. So I'll say formal charge of nitrogen, and you need to show all your work for these calculations to try to stay organized. Nitrogen, we're going to take the valence electrons for nitrogen, which is 5. And then we subtract the number of dots in its circle. One, two, three, four. So five minus four is positive one. So that's a really weird five. But it is a five. So plus one for nitrogen. And then the last one for this Lewis structure is the oxygen here, which has a triple bond. So I'll do formal charge of the oxygen with a triple bond to show that it's different than the original one. So that formal charge, same valence electron, six, but this time we subtract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that gives us 6 minus 5 is positive 1. All right, so now that you have the individual calculations for each atom in the structure, you need to calculate the delta Fc. 
I should have brought a different color, but I'm just gonna use purple again. Delta FC is the last step for the Lewis structure where you're gonna take the maximum number that you calculated and subtract the minimum number that you calculated. So it can get confusing with the sign. Um, but if we look at this, the maximum number we have is positive one. We have two of them. So we'll write positive one, that's the maximum number. And then we subtract the minimum number. So the smallest number we calculated was negative one. All right, and then we get one minus negative one equals two. So that number is very important. We'll use it to compare uh, the delta FC for this structure to see which one's better. But now let's calculate the individual atoms and formal charges for this structure. So again, I'm gonna draw circles here. Um, and notice that these two oxygens are identical. So we actually only need to do one formal charge calculation for oxygen this time. This time we needed, this previous one we needed two calculations because these oxygens are different. The one here, the oxygens are the same. All right, so we just have to do two calculations for this one. Fc of the oxygen, which will be six valence electrons, subtract it possesses one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in this structure. So that gives us zero. And then nitrogen. Um, has seven or five valence electrons, so it wants to have five valence electrons. And in this structure, it has one, two, three, four electrons. So five minus four is plus one. And then we'll do our delta FC calculation. That will be the last step. So we take the maximum number, which is positive one. And we subtract the minimum number, which is zero. And we get one. All right, so now we compare the two delta FCs. Two for this one, one for this one. The closer the delta FC is to zero, the more stable the structure. So we want the delta FC to be zero. Between two and one, this number is closer to zero, which means that this one is the more likely structure. So it's asking which one is most likely. It's this one. So on a test or a quiz, just make it clear which one you choose. You can't just do all the calculation and say you're done, you didn't answer the question. According to our calculations, we need to show the work to verify and to support our claim that this structure is the better one. Okay, so you can circle it or write this one's better, but you need to answer the question. So that's formal charge. Moving on. Last type of problem here are bond energy problems. If you have a bond energy problem, you need to be given a bond energy table. You will not be required to memorize bond energy values, so you'll always be given this as a tool to do these problems. But keep in mind, there's even a note here I added, you have to draw Lewis structures to do these problems because you need to know what types of bonds are involved. So I'm gonna do 3A here as the example, and we need to draw Lewis structures. So to do that, we need to add up all of the valence electrons. So carbon gives us four, each hydrogen gives us one, oxygen gives us six, and hydrogen gives us one. So that gives us a total of 14 electrons. Some of you will get to the point where you don't need to do this little calculation and that's fine, um, but I'm just gonna do it to make sure we're doing this correctly. So the next step is to connect all of our atoms to a central atom. This one's a little bit weird. It's kind of a busy structure. And the reason it's written a little strangely here, CH3OH, the reason these H's are separated is because the way it's written is giving you a hint as to how it's bonded. So you'll notice in some of these, the reason it's written differently in that they separated out certain elements is it's telling you how it's bonded. So I'm going to take that hint and I'm going to draw the Lewis structure according to that hint there. So it says that the 
basically it says that the hydrogens here are connected to that carbon and this hydrogen is connected to the oxygen. So I'll do C with the three H's around it. And then it has an oxygen and then that oxygen has the other hydrogen. Okay. And then I need to add electrons to our outer atoms to complete their octet, except for hydrogen, because hydrogen doesn't get dots. So I'm only adding dots to oxygen. And you'll notice this is actually a really easy Lewis structure, because if we count, we need to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. We've used the correct amount. This Lewis structure is done. So that's half the work right there. Once you have your Lewis structure, you just need to use your table of bond energies to find the correct values for each of these types of bonds and add up their energies, okay? So we have a few different types of bonds. Notice we have these CH, these CH bonds. So we'll find CH in our table CH single bond, it's 418. So we'll take 418, and we used three of these bonds, CH, CH, CH. So since we used three of them, we need to multiply this number by three. Um, and this is in kilojoules. Units are here, kilojoules per mole, really. Uh, but we used three of them, so we need to multiply that number by three. And I would recommend that you label what that bond was. So you can kind of keep track of what you've already done. All right, so that takes care of those three bonds. Um, next, we have a CO single bond. So you're looking for the CO single bond. Be very careful because there's a CO single, double, and triple bond. So you need to make sure you're using the right value. We have a single bond, so we're gonna use this number, 358 kilojoules. We only have one of those bonds, so we'll just take that number. And that was a CO single bond. All right, one more bond left. It's an OH single bond. So we need to find the OH single bond. Here it is, 459 kilojoules. And we only have one of those. All right, we've set up our problem. Now we just need to do the calculation and we can type this in all in one step. So three times 418 plus 358 plus 459 equals 2071. Don't forget your units. These are in kilojoules our answer so it stands out and that is it so keep in mind that for these bond energy questions you have to draw a Lewis structure once you have your Lewis structure use the table to find all the values and do your calculation and this is your final answer but you need to show this work to lead up to that answer all right those are the three types of problems on your covalent compounds assignment uh, let me know if you have questions. You just have a few more to finish. Actually, the formal charge one, there's just one question, so we did it already. Got a few more bond energy, one more resonance. So, easy work for you. Good luck. Have fun.